Okay, so um, before we get into <clears throat> the machinery but necessary business of our meeting, we would like to take time to celebrate the achievements of a number of very special members. So the next item of business is to recognize those amongst us who've been a member of the OEA for more than 50 years. We are pleased to recognize eight individuals who have reached this remarkable milestone, and we are happy to have a number of these members with us in the audience this afternoon. For those able to participate this afternoon, I will be asking each of you individually to step forward when I call your name and to receive your certificate and have your photo taken. And if you wish, you can take a few moments to address the audience. I think we give you two minutes. <laughs> I will also take a, a moment to read your brief bio and share some photos um, that have been personally selected by each of the members of Longstanding. Their full bios and photos for those members will be available to view on our website over the next week. So our first member of Longstanding is Madot Abdu. And I believe, there you are. Hi, please. Please come forward and join us on stage. Madot graduated from Cairo University School of Architecture in 1964, emigrating to Canada two years later. I'm talking about you while you're getting here. <laughs> he went on to join the firm now known as WZMH, where he worked as job captain on 390 Bay Street in Toronto and on a pavilion that incorporated a roof suspended glass structure. Madot became an OEA member in 1971, and three years later he became an associate with WZMH and was, in several, and was involved in several projects in Nova Scotia, Ontario, and internationally, as well as the Granite Club in Toronto, three Four Seasons hotels in Egypt, and King uh -oh, Ab Abdelaziz yes, University Master Plan, and the Kingdom Trade Centre in Saudi Arabia, and the Beirut Trade Centre in Lebanon, the Leningrad Sports Entertainment Complex Master Plan in the former USSR. In 1985, Medot became a partner at um, WZMH and continued until his retirement in 2012. All in all, he had a tenure of 43 years at one practice. So um, please, if there's a few words you'd like to say, please come forward. And... Thank you very much for this introduction. First, I'd like to thank the association for this valuable recognition. Yes, it has been a long, long way and a challenging journey over the last half a century. It started with the OAA registration course in the late 60s and subsequently augmented by the OAA continuing education program. In between, there were a lot of interesting challenges projects nationally and internationally. The guiding principles during my whole career were responsibilities are assumed and not assigned. That was my first priority in my practice. Secondly, inclusion, integration, building science and leadership. While these sound unrelated to each other, but in reality they are. And they form the basis for successful project delivery and realizes owner's expectations. We can elaborate on these issues after the meeting, if you like. Thank you again for sharing this moment with me and the OAA for this initiative. Thank you very much. The OEA would next like to recognize Tanu Altasar. Please come forward and join us on stage. I'm born in Estonia, Tonu is an accomplished international architect who graduated from the University of Toronto with a bachelor degree in 1967. He joined Bregman and Hammond, now B&H, in 1967 and was appointed as partner in 1975. Early in his career, Tono collaborated with internationally renowned architects and leading developers on multi-major 
multi-use developments that have transformed Toronto's skyline, including the first Canadian place, Brookfield Place, formerly the BCE Place, and most recently, 16 York. In 2006, he was appointed as a senior partner and managing director for the Middle East and relocated to Dubai, where he helped significantly expand B&H's international operations throughout the Middle East and Asia. Tunu also maintains a specialty in interior design, space planning, and ergonomics, which culminated in him being the founding partner in B&H's interior design studio. He's a member and past vice chair of the REIC Interiors Committee and was appointed as a fellow of the REIC Institute in 2005. In his spare time, Tono enjoys traveling the world with his wife, Anne, and learning from different cultures, which influence his comprehensive understanding of the many components that combine to create truly memorable spaces and buildings. So, would you like to come forward and say a few words? Congratulations. So it's for all of you from the past and the present. And this is a little bit of a funny background. My grade 13 English teacher at Beansville High School advised the students to go into architecture if you could draw or paint, which he couldn't do. And architecture was the second highest paid profession at that time, according to him. <laughs> During our U of T time, in our second to fourth year, the term started with two weeks in Dorset, sketching and painting and beer at night. It was most enjoyable. Our five, of our five years in school, we had trips to New York and Chicago, where we also visited Mies van der Rohe's office. But with ongoing school, European visits occurred much, much later. I spent summers working in St. Catharines, and uh, just before graduating, I was invited to Bregman and Hammond's design studio by an associate that I had worked with in St. Catharines, doing house designs and presentation drawings for his designs, and that is how I established myself. No CAD until much later, but ink and pencil crayons still now. Um, what was really enjoyable was my much design-related travel. US, Mexico, Indonesia, Bahamas, Barbados, England, Shanghai, where our office was registered as 0001, and Estonia, where I was born. But now, back for design, jury member, prime minister advisor, and city and school lecturer. Um, for work, I was three times each in Kiev, St. Petersburg, and Damascus, places where I could or would never be able to go again. I started a UAE office in Dubai with work there, Sharjah and Abu Dhabi. Most fun were the many Italian trips to quarries for our project, marble and granite selections, as well as history and Italian Trade Commission travel with other invitees of our OAA members. Spain and Turkey were also lovely search review trips. I worked on projects with Edward Durrell Stone, SOM, KPF, Ricardo Bofield, Philip Johnson, Santiago Calatrava, Daniel Liebskin, Dan Hanganu, and uh, among others, and locals, Eb Zeidler, and Architects Alliance, and presently with Chicago Smith Gill on a Cadillac Fairview project on Front Street. Our office has worked with others in Toronto, too. My first early projects were the Camp Warden Data Center, the huge MAP major postal plant, and a couple of hospitals. And then I moved mostly on to commercial projects. The Eaton Center, then joined by Zeidler, first Canadian place with the BMO Pavilion, continued TD work where I had met Mies, and then first Canadian Center Calgary, the BMO Edmonton, and Brook Brookfield Place, as mentioned, which was really my favorite project with SOM and Calatrava. Four hotels in Niagara Falls and the Fallsview Major Casino, also with Ebb Zeidler. Recent work has been four office towers with Cadillac Fairview in Toronto and Montreal and the Rideau Centre edition in Ottawa. Today, with 16 York pretty well finished, it's 160 front with TD and the teachers being the major tenants and us as architects of record. I've enjoyed my continuing relationships among Cadillac Fairview and PCL as well as my lasting friends at B plus H, and I must say, the OAA. Thank you. Thank you, inspiring. Leonard Sedun is our uh, next member of long standing. 
I see you over there. Great, please come forward. Leonard Sedun graduated from the University of Manitoba in 1965. While still in architecture school, he was hired by Parkin and Associates on a one-year contract and moved to Toronto the day after graduation. Um, he later took a position at Krang and Boak Architects, but decided to leave the firm and travel to Europe, visiting Ukraine where his family had emigrated, and later the United States and the Caribbean. During that time, he freelanced for smaller architectural firms and first did some professional acting. He continues to do work on television and in the movies to this day. In the summer of 1971, the architectural partnership of Sedun and Kinerva, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, was launched. They began to work in health care with Leonard recognizing the challenge of designing long-term care homes, and it can be both demanding and rewarding. The firm also took on commercial and residential projects, including the design of churches, pumping stations, loft apartments, and even single family residential projects. Since 2016, Leonard continues to work in architecture and is currently involved in a substantial addition to a long-term care home in Strathroy and work on the second phase of a senior's apartment in Thunder Bay with Christopher McCormick. Looks forward to avoiding retirement for many more years. <laughs> Thank you, Leonard. What a great country. I get honored for getting old and enjoying what I love to do and become part of this growing world. But I'm a little disillusioned. I spent 50 plus years dedicated to the association, paying fees, and then they say, You've got three minutes to respond. <laughs> of course, I was hoping for the gold watch. But she said, you're not retired yet. <laughs> my personal regret is that my professor from university is not here. In second term, he took me aside and he diligently said, you're never going to graduate if you waste all this time playing sports. <laughs> I played for the University of Manitoba for five years on the basketball team. I played two years on the golf team. I played five years with the Faculty of Architecture, football, and, 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 and hockey. And I graduated. And here I am. <laughs> I'd like to thank the Ontario Association of Architects Committee for this wonderful honor and a wonderful memory. Thank you. Thank you, Leonard. And now, um, next, we would like to recognize Alan Stone. Alan, okay, hi. Please come forward. Alan graduated from the University of Toronto with a Bachelor of Architecture degree in 1968. He worked with Martin Mendelo in Toronto for the next five years on a wide variety of projects, including apartment stores, industrial buildings, shopping centers, as well as his boss's house. That's pretty nervy. Um, in 1973, he launched his own private practice and was an active partner until 2016. During that time, he worked on numerous projects, including the restoration of the Bank of Upper Canada building on Adelaide Street in Toronto, the design of the Iron Workers Pension Fund building in North York, and the Beth Radham Synagogue, the DeBoer Furniture Store on Young, Young and the DeBoer Furniture Store on Young Street. He does continue to work full-time, and his most recent projects include a new supermarket, a 25-story mixed-use waterfront development, and two residential projects with his sons. His work has received numerous awards, including the Credit Foncier Restoration Award, the Government General's Award, and the Ontario Masonry Council Award of Merit. He loves to cook, 
enjoys playing golf, and travels when he can visit his bucket list of architectural treasures. Thank you, Alan. They gave Leonard three minutes. They only gave me two. <laughs> they know me. I'm going to take them off to reclose. Madam President, honored fellows, fellow members, and guests, when I received the invitation on March the 2nd to attend this event, I was surprised. I never had counted the time since the 11th of August, 1971, which was the date I received my license to practice. When people asked me, what do you do, my response was, it's not what I do, it's who I am. I don't remember not being an architect in spirit, if not in fact. I must admit that the notion that I've been a licensed architect for 50 years reminded me of the people who shaped my career. I would like to share some of those memories with you. My first student job was with Gilland and Janice, drawing elevations of washrooms complete with four by four maple leaf tiles. Dr. Eugene Janice was the designer, Mr. William Gilliland, the spec writer. I learned that it wasn't enough to design buildings, they had to get built. And incidentally, Dr. Janice could design brilliantly. Mr. Gilliland taught me the importance of getting them built properly, which I do to this day. My second job, which lasted from my third year in university until I started independent practice in 1973, was with Martin Mendel. Marty taught me that clever design was not a function of budget, but was the result of imagination. If you could make magic happen with pedestrian materials, in those days, brick and cedar shakes, you could design anything of merit, which I love doing to this day. At the Menlo office, I met two significant, significantly influential people. Franklin Glazier, who won a Massey Medal for a house in Toronto, and he introduced me to Frank Lloyd Wright and Bruce Goff, to this day, I'm not sure if that was a curse or a blessing, but I learned to appreciate individuality. Danko Kramastava, who worked for Arthur Erickson before coming to Toronto, taught me the importance of context and landscaping in architecture, and that the entrance experience began with the approach to a building from first sight and not from when you open the front door. This, too, informs my work to this day. And most importantly, I appreciate my clients who paid me to test my imagination and give them buildings which so many enjoy to this day. It's been a source of great satisfaction to me. In fact, I'm designing a house for the daughter of a client for whom I designed a house 47 years ago. But by the way, I don't know how it happens, but uh, when architects old, get old, we all start to look like Philip Johnson. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So next, the OEA would like to recognize Louis Cook. Is Louis here? No. Louis advised us that he would be unable to join us today, but has provided some beautiful photos of his work. Um, Louis came to Canada in 1967 as a foreign trained architect. Um, after graduating from the Royal West of England Academy School in Architecture in 1960, he settled in Canada for a year and then he started out on a journey to become licensed with the OAA, which he did in 1971. He's enjoyed a channeling, challenging, sorry, and satisfying career path, including working for 23 years for Bell Canada's real estate department. He then set up his own practice in London, Ontario, working on residential and medium-sized commercial projects, some in Michigan, where he also obtained his license. In London, Louis managed to work in various positions with the London Society of Architects. He chaired the REIC um, Syllabus London Studio, as well as sat on OEA Council on two occasions in one term on Pro Demnity Board. He uh, mentored two foreign trained students from Columbia, both of whom successfully became licensed with the OEA, and he's currently a board member of the Pro Demnity Foundation for Architectural Research. So we are pleased, so pleased that these members of long standing were able to join us today. We will be paying tribute to our long-standing members, as I said before, on our website in the coming weeks by posting their full bios as they have been provided. Unfortunately, some of our long-standing members were unable to join us today or participate in the event. So um, the name of the three long-standing members that are not in attendance 
are going to be up on this. Roger E. Fennell, E. George Knider, and Desmond Roy Chaudhuri. So, um, they have all contributed and dedicated so much to the profession as members who have reached the milestone of 50 years. Again, thank you and congratulations to these individuals for your perseverance, dedication, long-standing contributions to our profession. Please give them all a round of applause. Thank you, Susan, um, and congratulations to our members of long-standing. It's uh, such an achievement 